Am I free to go? I want my lawyer now. I want a lawyer right now. Mr. Nolan, it's for you. My name is Patrick Nolan. I'm an attorney licensed in the state of Missouri. This is Pat Talks Law. My name is Patrick Nolan. I'm an attorney licensed in the state of Missouri. This is Pat Talks Law, windshield time. Welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about the case in Utah. You may have heard about it, you may not have. Utah woman Tilly Buchanan is charged with lewdness because she had the audacity to be topless in her own home. My God, it's a horrible, horrible thing. Who would expect that women in Utah might be topless in their own home? What are they thinking? I don't remember seeing a supply of burkas laid on for Utah, but hey, you know, it's Utah. So here's the deal. She was charged with lewdness because she was topless in her own home, but there's a backstory to that. And like any story, it has a twist. So let's start with the facts. The Salt Lake City Tribune, Salt Lake Tribune, excuse me, reported that Ms. Buchanan and her husband were installing insta insulation in their garage. Okay? They had stripped off their clothes just inside the garage to get the itchy material off their skin. If you've ever installed insulation, the truth of that statement is beyond dispute. There is nothing worse than having fiberglass insulation all through your clothes and itchy. It's horrible. And truly, it doesn't even come out, not with a shower. It takes more than that. It sucks. The people that do that for a living do not get paid enough. Unless they're doing my house, in which case the bill's outrageous. Uh, so, she was topless when her stepchildren, ages 13, 13 year old boy, 10 year old girl, and a, I think it was a seven year old boy, came down the stairs and they saw her topless. Now, you know, she said to the newspaper that wasn't a sexual thing. You know, it was a teaching moment. This is the human body, sometimes, you're gonna see a breast. It's not a sexual thing, and, and yes, for those of you who aren't aware of this, people have breasts, and not just women. Guys do too. Some guys really should think about wearing a bra. Now, so she took the teaching opportunity to say, hey, this, this happens, uh, it's not a sexual thing, just go about your day. And that would have been fine. And if that's what happened, there was nothing wrong with that at all. However, you heard the magic word, stepmother. That means there's a mother out there, a woman who used to be married to Miss Buchanan's husband. And let me tell you, Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. The lady who used to be married to Miss Buchanan's husband, the mother of these three children, had a different take on it and reported her to the police, Miss Buchanan. So now she is fighting three counts of lewdness involving a child. It's a class A misdemeanor. If convicted, she could face up to a year in jail and be on the sex offender registry for 10 years. Okay. The misdemeanor, misdemeanors are minor, sex offender registry, that makes this a very, very serious case. So she's been fighting this. Criminal charges for being shirtless in her own home. I'll let you in on a secret. Mrs. Pat was topless in our, our house yesterday. And this morning, got dressed for work without properly covering herself before she, you know, put on those clothes. Can you believe that? It's horrible. Horrible, I tell you. So, again, if you're going to be topless, 
your house is the place to do it. Really? How the hell do you expect people to get in a shower? And I don't know if, you know, some of you people don't have kids, you may not know this, but it doesn't matter if a door is closed, they open it and walk in the room anyway. It happens. So, you know, criminal cases are always in dispute. The person who's charged, you know, always pleads not guilty. And rightly so, they should. The state's got to prove the charge. But Miss Buchanan said she'd been in the garage working that day, long sleeves and protective clothing, and they stripped down so they could take a shower. However, the prosecuting attorney, West Valley City Deputy Attorney Corey Sherwin, has a completely different story. He says she stripped down in front of her stepchildren after making a statement how if the husband could take off his shirt, then a woman should be able to as well. Um, he further alleges that Buchanan, while under the influence of alcohol, told her husband she would only put her shirt back on if he showed her his penis. Well, that does not ring with any credibility to me. I, it just doesn't make sense. They've been married a period of time. I don't know exactly how long, but they've been married. I'm willing to bet that she has seen his penis before and didn't need to have a display in front of the children to see it. I'm just guessing. So this was reported by the child's mother, children's mother, okay? And the police got involved after the Utah Division of Children and Family Services started an investigation. Now, and they investigated, mom reported it. This is what you do when you're getting ready to fight over custody. Okay, a lot of people will find some reason to report the other parent to Children's Division and cite all the horrible things that person is doing because it gives them leverage in the case, or so they think. By the way, courts, courts see through that bullshit, and they really don't like it. So, you know, it's... It's ridiculous. Now, regarding the 10th Circuit case, the two women who sued Fort Collins, okay, earlier this year, the 10th Circuit struck down a Fort Collins city ordinance that prohibited women from exposing their breasts in public. Can't go topless. That was struck down and argued that, you know, it violated equality under the law. Women were treated differently. Um, and people have different points of view on that. Like I said, I may not be entirely comfortable with it, but I support your right to go to go topless. Um, and frankly, if you want to go topless around me, that's cool. I don't care. I really would only be uncomfortable with it with my kids around. And maybe depending on what we were doing, because, I mean, Anyway, so there are a lot of people I think out and feel kind of like I do. They may not be entirely comfortable with it, but they would support your right to do so. And I would expect that very few women are actually going to go topless. So her attorney argues that she was singled out for prosecution solely on the basis of sex. Prosecutor, of course, would disagree with that. They're arguing that the Tenth Circuit ruling was narrowly tailored to prohibiting enforcement of a city ordinance, not the state's lewdness statute. And while that may be correct, that does not mean that the logic is flawed when applying it to the state order, the state statute. Excuse me. 
and they're arguing that state statute does not discriminate on the basis of gender. However, the application of that statute surely does. How do we know this? Because the woman was topless, standing next to a man who was topless, and the woman is charged. The man wasn't. So we already know that the application of that statute is being applied on the basis of sex. Ergo, they've got a problem. Now, and, you know, the prosecutors are making arguments about how if the woman's breast is struck from the statute, uh, could have unintended consequences, um, you know, and not differentiating between male and female breasts would affect their child sex offender laws that prohibits touching a young girl's breast. Well, first, let me tell you something. That's ridiculous. Because that touching is for sexual gratification. It doesn't matter whether it's a girl or a boy. And if it does under their law, they need to fix their law. Because the sex offenders are going to be doing that, are going to do it anyway. They really don't care how you defined it. So, yeah, anyway. You know, the prosecutor says this would create an absurd, absurd result. And I agree with him. His analysis of the applications is absurd. And since he's the guy making the charging decision, you would think that absurdity is something he would tend to avoid. However, they, they didn't. So, it's going to have to be argued. And there is an argument scheduled for November 19th. It's been delayed several times. Um, you know, she's had to deal with this for the past eight months, Ms. Buchanan has. And, uh, you know, she's not an activist. She wins this case. You're not going to see her out standing in the public, topless, waving signs. Um, you know, she's not free the nipple cause person. You know, this was a teaching moment that has been turned criminal not because her actions were wrong, but because it's a leverage between a warring couple, between warring parents, and it can be used that way. I would be surprised if there hasn't been a case filed um, regarding modification of their custody arrangement, um, or if there won't be one filed shortly. Anyway, so that is the, uh, the interesting story of the day. There is another one. I'm going to touch on it very briefly. If you have not been following the medical marijuana seizures in Missouri, you should start paying attention to that. Um, and that's all I can say on that at the moment, but you should start paying attention. There are a lot of issues coming up. It is important that you know what your courts and your law enforcement are doing so that you can make intelligent, educated decisions when you go vote. Thank you. Please hit like, subscribe, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon.